Hey there, I'm Erica Brennis with Moval. Welcome to episode 10 of Transit Trends. We're so excited to have you. And on this episode, we want to continue the conversation around the impact transportation is having on the environment and how transportation technology and innovation has the potential to significantly reduce climate emissions. On our last episode around shared mobility and the environment, it struck up some great conversations. So on this episode, we're discussing electric vehicles with the director of Drive Oregon. Drive Oregon is a nonprofit whose mission is to promote, support, and grow the electric mobility industry in Oregon. But what they're doing and what they're learning by promoting electric vehicles in Oregon could easily be a model and have an impact on the industry for the rest of the country and beyond. Drive Oregon's vision for electric mobility includes more than just electric cars encompassing all vehicles that have the potential to be electric, from bikes to buses to 18-wheelers to farm equipment. We really come at it from more of a holistic approach. There, there are places in the country um, where I think they want electric cars because then they think they don't have to do anything else. And if we just made all the cars electric, then we don't need land use planning or transit or transportation network companies or innovation. We can just make the cars electric and people can keep commuting in from the suburbs. And um, That's not the vision in Oregon. The vision in Oregon is, okay, we've got a pretty good transit system, we've got pretty good bicycle facilities, we've got pretty good land use planning. What's next? What else do we need to do to reach our climate change goals, to build the kind of livable communities we want, um, to keep this the kind of place we want it to be even when it's growing rapidly? And how does electrification fit into that? Jeff Allen says one of the biggest challenges, if not the biggest, is the consumer. With electric vehicles, the perception is that they're expensive toys for rich people. You know, a lot of people, you say electric vehicle now, they immediately think of Tesla, uh, which is great. It's a wonderful, wonderful vehicle. If money is no object, um, it's fantastic. But you can also buy a two or three year old used electric car for seven or eight thousand dollars and it's very cheap to operate. And we know that a lot of people in low income neighborhoods are relying on cars that were very cheap to buy but they probably cost a thousand dollars a month to fill with gas and to maintain. They're not very reliable and if you are working at an hourly service job and your car breaks down and you can't get to work, you could lose your job. But as if buying a car isn't an ordeal in and of itself, the consumer may not even consider an electric vehicle. You have individual car companies that are trying to sell their particular model, um, but it isn't anyone's job to sell the whole category. It's, we've really taken on the role of building the market. So how do we get more electric vehicles um, into the marketplace? How do we get more charging stations installed? How do we raise the visibility of this whole product category? Besides the positive impact on the environment, there's financial incentive as well to buying an electric vehicle thanks to a sizable tax credit, up to $7,500 if you buy new. And then of course, you'll save at the pump. In Oregon, the average cost of electricity to run an electric car is about $20 a month. Um, that's a charging station, not at your house, or is that at your that's house? That's charging at your house, okay. right, because the um, fueling your car on electricity is the equivalent of buying gas for about a dollar a gallon because electricity is much cheaper, uh, it's much more stable, um, so even with low gas prices, it's still cheaper. And according to the Natural Resource Defense Council, the typical electric vehicle accounts for less than half the carbon pollution than a conventional car over the course of its lifetime. Transportation is the biggest source of carbon pollution. It's the second biggest expense for most families and households. It uh, has a huge impact on how we live our lives, what kind of cities we live in, how physically fit we are. Um, so it touches all different aspects and it's incredibly complicated, right? There is no one solution. Pretty much all of us at some point in our lives are gonna be transit riders and car drivers and pedestrians. And uh, right now in particular, there's just a lot of opportunity to use these emerging technologies and, uh, and platforms to really make a difference. 
me now is Jeff Wood from The Overhead Wire to discuss more about electric vehicles and where the industry is going around this. So Jeff, electric vehicles are competing when it comes to car sales with all cars, all makes and models. And you don't see traditional marketing, advertising campaigns really selling uh, electric vehicles on TV the way you see gas powered vehicles on TV ads. So really if you're in the market for an electric vehicle, you have to go out to various dealerships and really make an effort to pick one out. Yeah, I, I really think it's kind of a niche uh purchasing it's a niche product right now and I think that ultimately you know we won't see more electric vehicles go onto the advertising uh, sales block until the fleets turn over and I think you know right now we're seeing cars from the 80s still on the street from the 90s on the street so I think it's going to take a long time for them to get used to um, uh, hawking their electric vehicles especially since they're kind of a niche product and you see a lot of them in bigger cities but you're not going to see a lot of them in smaller places and rural areas around the country. And Jeff, this goes way beyond just John Doe buying an electric vehicle. I mean, we've got to address all vehicles from farm equipment to 18 wheelers uh, to buses and beyond. So ultimately John Doe and John Deere are going to have to deal with electric vehicles and start building them because I'd rather actually have to worry about point source pollution at the power plant level than at the vehicle level because the vehicles are driving through our neighborhoods and, and polluting versus power plants which are usually often different parts of the, of the city or different parts of the, of the region and you can actually address those a lot easier than addressing every single individual vehicle which you will with electric vehicles. In places like London, in England, they're having uh, real issues with their pollution right now and what's happening is that they're already past their 2017 uh, li limits for pollution. Um, so that's a big issue. And I think that here in San Francisco, I really, really appreciate the overhead wires for the buses and the trains because uh, they do protect us from particulate matter. And people complain about them all the time in terms of their visual aesthetic, but I always say that my lungs don't care about your visual aesthetic. When you talk about uh, a fleet of electric buses or converting gas buses to, or diesel buses to, uh, to electric or buying a new bus that's electric, that is very expensive. It can be, but we've already started converting buses from purely diesel to diesel hybrid. You know, bus turnover is once every 15 years, and so once those, uh, once those turnovers start to happen and you can buy whole fleets, then that's actually going to be much easier to turn over than, say, a vehicle fleet because people are so scattered in terms of when they buy new cars. So uh, if we can get agencies to start doing that, that's going to be a huge, dif uh, huge difference in terms of particulate matter in the air. Another interesting thing that happened recently is um, the fact that Portland, I think, and Seattle, C San Francisco, and Los Angeles are getting together to buy massive amounts, I think 24,000 uh, of electric vehicles for their city fleets. So that's a big turnover thing as well. So we can see bus fleets turn over, we can see city fleet vehicles turn over, you know, the, the ones that the building inspectors drive around and stuff like that. And then we'll see a huge change. And also there's gonna be a perception of, oh, that's an electric car, that's cool. Uh, it's driving around the city and, and staying and keeping my lungs clean. So I, I, I really like the idea of, of electric buses buying in bulk and also cars uh, too. And Jeff, we have to really start thinking about electric vehicles and how you know popular they will likely be in the future when it comes to construction. I mean, would it be wise to maybe require uh, all new construction by city code uh, put in charging stations for electric vehicles or is that not a good idea. So there's two sides to this, right? They're the first side is that the more codes you put on buildings, the more expensive they get. And with our affordable housing issues that are happening in major cities today, that might become a problem. At the same time, you do want to have more electric vehicles, uh, whether they're shared vehicles or people uh, have them as their own. And Jeff, we were talking a little bit about the cost of an electric vehicle. You know, a lot of people think, Tesla. And as much as I would love a $100,000 car, I cannot afford one. Uh, but the idea of, you know, what Jeff Allen brought up in our interview was that there are used vehicles, used electric vehicles for eight or 9,000. That seems way more doable, but is that a stigma that we're going to have to overcome when it comes to electric vehicles? I don't know if it's a stigma. I think that ultimately it's uh, a discussion of the fleet turnover, right? So however many vehicles that are produced and then how many of those filter down into the resale market. We have $30,000 Teslas that have been ordered already by a bunch of people. They put their down payment down, but that's still a lot of money. And so I think one of the biggest things that we're going to need to do is build 
uh, smaller vehicles and uh, some company is going to have to come up with a really cheap electric vehicle and so that it's not like this big environmental thing that everybody's going to go do because they're environmentalists but they're going to do it because it's an in inexpensive vehicle that gets them around and is cheaper to operate. I'm about to be in the market uh, to buy a new car myself so this topic is something that uh, I'm considering greatly so stay tuned to see what I end up getting. All right, thanks Jeff so much for your time. And again, thanks to Drive Oregon for Jeff Allen's time. Don't forget to hit up Jeff on the overhead wire. Uh, he has a daily newsletter that's super helpful, covers all things in transportation, mobility, and city planning. It's really fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We love hearing from you as well. So leave a comment on this video and share it with all your friends, your family, your coworkers, et cetera. All right, see ya.